Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to Reducing Arduino's Power Consumption Part 4. So in Part 4 all we're going to do is look at what is the brownout detection circuit or capability in an Arduino, how to turn it off, and the power savings we can get from turning it off. What is brownout detection? Well brownout detection or BOD as it abbreviated in the data sheet, it basically detects when there's a drop in voltage on VCC or the power source to the chip. And depending on the magnitude of that drop and its length of time that it occurs, or its duration I should say, the brownout detection circuit may or may not reset the microcontrol. It depends on the exact brownout detection setting you're using. So a change in VCC could cause some unexpected behavior from the chip. Some type of state could change in the chip, causing some functionality that's unexpected. And if you have a design where unexpected functionality is really bad, you would use the brownout detection circuit. If you have a design where you know VCC is pretty dependable, your power source is pretty dependable, and the low probability or low risk of a change happening and, and something funny happening in the, the chip is not a big deal, then you can shut off the brownout detection circuit. So the brownout detection circuit is controlled through the fuse bits. So the fuse bits on the chip are in non-volatile memory, so we can't easily change them in code or through the Arduino IDE. And what we're going to actually have to use is a programmer, which I'll talk about. But since they're in non-volatile memory, they're memorized every time the chip is turned on or off. The Arduino Uno chip, the Atmega 328P, has three different fuses. It has the high, high fuse, the low fuse, and the extended fuse. And the brownout detection is in the extended fuse. And actually, you can see that in the fuse, there's only three bits being used. You have three different levels, and each level changes the, the behavior of the brownout detection. The magnitude of the voltage or its duration is affected by changing the level. So there's three different choices, and I'm not going to get into the levels. You can go to the data sheet to look at it more. But if you want them all to be off, you program them as, as one. And that's what I'm showing in hexadecimal there. Change extended fuse to 0, 07, which essentially will make uh, bits 0, 1, and 2 all 1s, which will shut off the brownout detection. Now, Arduino, the way it's configured in the bootloader, has brownout detection level 2 on. Okay, so, so when, you, you, when you have your Arduino, brownout detection is automatically on. And as I mentioned, to turn it off, we're going to need a programmer. And so a programmer allows us to manipulate the memory in Arduino, uh, it allows us to program an Arduino chip if the Arduino chip doesn't have a bootloader. So the Arduinos that you buy on the Uno and stuff, they have what's called a bootloader, and you could load them right from the IDE using serial. To program it using a programmer, we're going to use the SPI connection. So I'm not going to go into a lot of details of, of the programmer, but I used a fairly low-cost one, and it's fairly high functionality and fairly low cost. I, I use the AVR pocket programmer and you can get this at SparkFun. It's low cost as I mentioned. There's a ton of different options out there for programmers, for AVR programmers I should say, and they range in price. But this one's a pretty good one. Now I should mention on the programmer, when you hook it up to your computer, you're going to need a driver typically. And this one that I got from SparkFun, if you go to their website, they tell you how to get the driver and all that. So then you need the AVR Dude software, and that's free and open. You can, you can download that. Just go ahead and search it on the internet. Now the programmer connects to the ISP header on the Uno. If you have a, if you have a board that doesn't have an ISP header, like I'm going to show in this example using the uh, Pro Mini, you just want to make sure you use the SPI connections. So for instance, the programmer is going to need to be connected to reset. It's going to be connected to ground. And it's also going to need to be connected to the VCC input of the chip. But it also needs these SPI connections. And once again, if you look on the data sheet of the chip, you can see it. But just for your reference, you would just basically use wires to route it to pin 13 for the clock and pin 12 and 11. Okay, one thing I'll mention too before I move on is this programmer that I use, the AVR Pocket Programmer, I have the Pro Mini that, that takes 3.3 volts, and this Pocket Programmer is in 5 volts. Now, I use this anyway, and, and I was able to, to program my Pro Mini, which takes 3.3 volts, without any problems and without damaging it using 5-volt logic and 5-volt power. The Pro Mini chip can, in most situations, work at 5 volts, and it won't damage it. It's just because of the, the setting of the clock 
at the speed the clock's going, it's not made, it's not recommended to use at five volts, I should say. So I'll put that out there, but with a 3.3 volts Pro Mini, I had no problems using this programmer. So we have our programmer, we've put our driver on there, we've connected it to our Uno or our Pro Mini or whatever Atmega 328P board we're using, or maybe we're just using the chip. Next, we want to use AVR Dude to change the fuse setting. So AVR Dude is actually controlled through, if you're using Windows, which I used in this example, the command prompt, or the terminal on a Mac or a Linux machine. And so the command prompt on Windows, if you're not familiar with it, you can just search in the search bar and you'll find the program and it basically allows you to control your Windows machine using commands. So here you're seeing a picture of the command prompt and for this example, to basically bring up AVR Dude and to change the, uh, the code, or I should say the fuse, we type in this command. And I actually made a mistake here, so I, I should have AVR Dude in front of this. But really, you're going to type in AVR Dude, the C, USB Tiny is the chip on the programmer. You're telling it the target uh, chip or AVR chip you're programming. And then you're, you're giving command of what you're changing. And you're changing the extended fuse, the E fuse, to 07, which is going to set the brownout detector off. If you want to set it back to the state it was in, which it comes like in the Arduino, you would set, change this 7 to a 5. And you can see after you press enter and you execute it, you get sort of the status of, the, of everything happening. You can see that it's very polite. It tells you when it's done and says thank you. But anyway, real easy to use as long as you have the driver and the programmer set up. And once again, you can do a lot of things through AVR Dude. I'm just showing you how to change this fuse to change the state or to turn off the brownout detection circuit. Okay, before we see the power savings from, from turning off the brownout detection, I'm just going to show real briefly the code I, I'm using in this setup. And you can find this code on my blog, but I'm using the Seep Sleep Library. I'm going to delay for six seconds so you see the normal power draw. And then I'm going to turn on sleep. I'm going to go into the, the lowest sleep mode, which gives you the most power savings, and that's sleep mode power down. I'm going to turn the ADC off to get extra savings, and we talked about that in part three, and then I'm going to put the CPU to sleep. For more detail on this, look at the parts one, two, and three. So let's look at the effects, though, of this code along with the brownout detection being turned first on and then off. So here's the setup. I have the Arduino Pro Mini, as I mentioned before. I'm feeding in 3.3 volts directly to the Pro Mini, so I'm not using the regulator. And I broke the power on LED, so we're not going to see any power draw from the LED. So just in the power down sleep mode with the ADC off and the brownout detection on, you can see my current consumption here. And I'm using an instrument that I have at work, which can supply power and measure the current draw that's coming out of it very accurately. So we can see here that we have 104 microamps which is pretty low power. So in, in normal state, the Arduino Pro Mini is going to be drawing milli, milliamps of, of power. And then we have it with the brownout detection circuit turned off. And now our current consumption drops to about 87 microamps. So we're looking at, what, above 15, more like 16 or 17 microamps of, of power savings. So it's not a huge amount. It, it is an amount, but it's not a huge amount. So, you know, if you need the brownout detection circuit or, or you'd like to have it and, you know, power consumption isn't that critical, then just leave the power, the brownout detection on. But if you have a design such as a sensor that's going to sit somewhere out in the middle of nowhere or somewhere where it's hard to reach and you need that power on that sensor to last for a very long time, then 17 microamps might be a lot. So it's, it all depends on your design, the trade-offs, how important battery life is. Okay, that's it for reducing Arduino's power consumption, part four. If you want the code, just go ahead to my blog. I'll have the uh, Arduino sleep code there. If you want to access the Atmega 328P data sheet to learn more about brownout detection in detail, there's the link. If you like what you saw and you're not already a subscriber, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Thank you for watching.